Arrays let you group lots of values together into a single collection, then access those values by the position in the collection. Swift uses type inference to figure out what type of data your array holds, like so. Var even numbers equals start an array, two, four, six, eight, end the array. Or var songs equals start the array, shake it off, uh, then comma, you belong with me, then back to December. As you can see, Swift uses brackets to mark the start and end of an array, and each item in the array is separated with a comma. When it comes to reading items out of an array, there's a catch. Swift starts counting at zero. This means the first item is zero, the second item is one, the third is two, and so on. So we would say songs zero, songs one, or songs two. And that will print out, shake it off, you long with me, and back to December in the results pane. An item's position in the array is called its index, and you can read any item from the array just by providing that index. However, you do need to be careful. Our array has three items in, which means indexes zero, one, and two work great, but if you try and read songs three, your playground will stop working. And if you try that in a real app, it would crash. Because we created our array by giving it three strings, Swift knows this is an array of strings. And we can confirm that by using a special command in the playground that will print out the data type of any variable, like this, type of songs. And that's gonna print out array string and angle brackets dot type into the results pane telling us that Swift considers songs to be an array of strings. Let's say you made a mistake and accidentally put a number on the end of our songs array. We have shake it off, you belong with me, back to December, and then comma three. And this time when Swift runs the code, you're gonna see an error message. The error is there saying, heterogeneous collection literal could only be inferred to any Add explicit type annotation if this is intentional. Or in plain English, it means it looks like this thing is designed to hold lots of types of data. If you really meant that, please make it explicit. Type safety is important. And although it's really neat that Swift can make arrays hold any kind of data, this particular case was an accident. Fortunately, I've already said you can use type annotations to specify exactly what data type you want an array to store. So, to specify a type of an array, write the type you want to store with brackets around it, like this, var songs, colon, open bracket, string, close bracket. Now we've told Swift we want to store only strings in the array, so we'll always refuse to run the code because three is not a string. If you really want the array to hold any kind of data, use a special any type, like this, var songs is an array of any. We've already shown how to create and fill an array with values in Swift, but things aren't quite so straightforward if you want to create the array, then fill it later. This kind of thing won't work. Var songs is an array of string, then songs zero equals shake it off. The reason is one that will seem needlessly pedantic at first, but has deep underlying performance implications, so I'm afraid you're just stuck with it. Put simply, writing var songs string like we have here on line three, tells Swift the songs variable will hold an array of strings, but it doesn't actually create that array. It just doesn't allocate any RAM or do any of the work to actually create a Swift array. It just says that at some point there will be an array and it will hold strings. There are a few ways to express this correctly, and the one that probably makes most sense at this time looks like this. Var songs is an array of strings, then equals open and close brackets. That uses a type annotation to make it clear we want an array of strings, and it assigns an empty array, and that's the open and close brackets part. You'll also commonly see this kind of construct. Var songs equals open and close brackets with string inside, then open and close parens afterwards. That means the same thing. The open and close parens means we want to create the array in question, which is then assigned to songs using type inference. 
This option is two characters shorter, so it's no surprise programmers prefer it. Note that you'll still see an error when you try and assign Shake It Off to Songs Zero. The error is Fatal Error Index Out of Range. What this means is we're trying to modify Songs Zero, and we haven't actually added Songs Zero yet, so there's nothing there to modify. The correct thing to do here is to append the string to the array, and we'll cover that later on. You can use some operators on arrays. For example, I have two string arrays here, and we can merge them using the plus operator like this. var both equals songs1 plus songs2. Then print both. You can also use plus equals to add and assign like this. Both plus equals an array of everything has changed.